841, morning to you. This is Breakfast with me and her. Yep, him and me. There's some great stories running through today's papers. Uh, let's have a look at some of them now, shall we? Yeah, I mean, it's quite nice. I say great because it's sad, but it's also a celebration of Dame Edna, Barry Humphreys, Les Patterson, however you want to view him. Um, he died yesterday in Sydney, 89 complications after an a fall and then an operation. Thought he was doing all right over the weekend, and this has just um, then been announced. So it's a mm. bit of a shocker because we thought that you know he was on the mend. But anyway, I think it's a moment of reflecting and looking back and smiling actually about Dame Edna, which is nice. And that picture in the Observer does it. If that's just Edna for me. Yeah, lovely and nice headline there. Forever Edna, it says. And there's also a story there about the Tory plan to politicise the civil service after the Raab scandal as well. That's still rolling on, isn't it? And if you fancy a holiday, well, you're not the only one. I can't blame you for that. But uh, I bet you're not getting a deal like this. Boris Johnson's been staying at a £4,000 a night villa in the Caribbean, uh, all courtesy of his mate. Well, apparently cousin. Cousin. Tycoon cousin, yes. Yes. So presumably he's got that for free. But it's his fourth holiday in ten months. They're not doing a lot of work. Mm. Let us know if you're watching or listening to us in Uxbridge and what you make of that story. Uh, and the Mail warns that eco-warriors could cause injury or even death at the King's coronation uh, by spooking the King's horses with rape alarms. Uh, speculation there in the Mail, and let's hope it just stays as speculation. Yeah, let's hope so, let's hope so. Let's talk to um, political consultant Emma Burnell and editor of Spiked, Tom Slater, who are both here. Morning, both. Good morning. Good morning. Emma, morning. Sunday Telegraph, um, J.K. Rowling, Trans row. Yeah, What's going on? I get, I'm getting a bit bored of all of this. To be honest, this is not a trans row at <laughs> oh, right. all. That's, well, um, they, they've put that bit into the headline. <laughs> Basically, um, there was in the Times yesterday the juiciest book review that I may have ever read. It was very spicy. Um, basically slating this book by Jolien Morn, saying it's badly written, it's oh, pompous, that, it's self-indulgent. Is that her? She, didn't, she then tweeted that this book review is very funny. They've previously oh. fallen out over trans row. But there's nothing to do. The book review itself was entirely um, you know, justified, frankly. Um, I haven't read the book, but you, he makes his case in the review. Now, as somebody. Oh, is this the lawyer fella? The lawyer fella, yeah. Jolien Mom. The one who's very right on, woke activist, and doesn't mind battering a fox to death. In, in his kimono. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, th that is what he is most famous for. And apparently, he spends eight pages of the book talking about that and, and being just self justificatory about it um look i make i write plays i direct plays uh, i have had good reviews i've had bad reviews um oh, bad re <laughs> not terrible reviews not not reviews like this i tell you uh, but they are an important part of putting work into the world that the reason there's been a row about it on twitter is that jolie and mom is saying that all of this this um uh, review couldn't possibly be justified and it's only um uh, aimed at him because the Times doesn't like his politics. Now, the Times review lots of things all the time by people they disagree with politically. Sometimes they'll give it a good review, sometimes they'll give it a bad review. They do review the product. And you have to know, as somebody putting um, art or creation out in the world, that is part of it. And it is scary and it's horrible, but it's reasonable. And I also do see it as criticism. And I always try to make sure if I'm giving something a bad review, I say why and what they could do better next time. Because that's what this is for. You sort of get the impression anyone called Jolian is going to think that whatever they do is marvellous. He's <laughs> no. one of those names. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's incredible as well because... He keeps losing. His, pro his good law project, the whole aim is that you, know, you take the government to court over all kinds of different things. I don't think he's ever won a case. Um, but again, he still thinks he's fighting the good fight. Um, not Maybe his next case will be with the Trades Description Act. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably yeah. against the RSPCA. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, says it all. Uh, yeah. Tom, should we have a look at the mirror? This is Just Stop Oil. You said they're going to stop all traffic. Yes, yeah, so they're going to, as from well, Tuesday... across the country. <laughs> Just in London, Good I Good luck say. with that. But they want to um, essentially do a series of what they call slow marches, so rather than having a, one big demonstration on a break people up into groups of about 1,000 people and just slowly march through London to try and bring things to a, to a standstill so they're not gluing themselves to things, which is progress, presumably. Um, but at the same time, soup, yeah. if you wanted to have a protest that was, again, designed to infuriate people and send them in the other direction, I, and I don't want to be ad hominem about that. I actually do want to be ad hominem <laughs> about this, but 
they talk a bit about Phoebe Plummer here, who's one of the prominent Just Stop Oil people, pointed out that a school that she went to was £45,000 a year. We had Edred Whittingham. Who? Edred Whittingham was the guy who disrupted the, the e uh, Edred. champion. Yes. His dad works in um, venture, cap venture capital. Um, they are you're never ridiculously surprised. posh and rich. They are. And you do think, at a certain point, this just resembles a kind of middle-class tantrum yeah. at the expense of working-class people. Oh, yeah. And they're never going to shed this if they carry on going down this direction. But I almost feel like with these protests, people often say, well, aren't they going to send other people in the other direction? Aren't you going to just annoy the people you're trying to convince? I don't think they care about that no. anymore. Otherwise, they would have shifted gear. It's awful. Stop using petrol. Get Daddy to buy you an electric vehicle. <laughs> like he did for me and Julian. <laughs> Julian. But they must Tarquin be... Tarquin and... Um, Tarquin, yeah. What was that? Indigo Rumbelow. Indigo Rumbelow was good. Yeah. yeah. But they must be aware that the public so. aren't receiving this well because they are saying they're going to change tactic. Well, there's actually a bit of a split. Right. <laughs> there's a kind of people's front of Judea, Judea, the people's front <laughs> oh, thing God. going on. Where Extinction Rebellion, which is kind of the mothership of all these different organisations, has said they're going to be a lot more... They're the ones who <laughs> said they're going to defend the uh, marathon from other eco-activists. <laughs> uh, whereas Just Stop Oil, which is, if anyone remembers, Roger Hallam, uh, slightly oh, yeah. crazy individual, uh, who is their alleged uh, mastermind is much more still given to these slightly more disruptive tactics. Right. So we'll be seeing that. Well, I suppose well. Extinction Rebellion has got to be a little bit more uh, on the ball now, haven't they, seen as their co-founder was was buying loads of pre-packaged food in Waitrose and driving it home in a diesel car. It's funny all that, isn't it? According to the sun. Um, I mean, the thing, if they are disrupting traffic, that at least is on brand for Just Stop Oil. Mm -hmm. um, I have slightly more sympathy for that tactic than I do for interrupting the snooker, um, which I, I, I'm not sure what the, the journey, the theory of change, as it's called in the campaigning world, is between we will disrupt the snooker and that will end the oil industry. Um, really hitting the fossil fuel industry where it hurts. Absolutely. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, who knows what those balls are made out of? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to even go there, Stephen. <laughs> uh, but there are, yeah, I, I just, there are times when you need to grab attention. Yeah. But the problem is, we've gone through a year or two of attention grabbing stunts. And I think Extinction Rebellion are right to change tack to say, we've got your attention, now we're going to move on and use that attention to do better things and to talk talk about, to really try to talk about what needs to be done rather than simply attention grabbing. And when what you have is just newer groups of people constantly trying to grab attention, A, it has diminishing returns, we're, left, we're paying them less attention, and B, it doesn't do the next step, which is the difficult step, the important step of really having a difficult conversation about how we shift from a world that is dependent on fossil fuels and oil from dictators and all of these terrible <coughs> things to a world that is much more sustainable yeah. and that's the bit we need to do oh yeah that's a conversation that needs to be had um look, we're, we're just about out of time tom can we just quickly because i can't resist can we have a look at <laughs> i mean the man who's just sort of reached the pinnacle of his mm. political career by becoming first minister of scotland uh, in the sunday times uh, first minister in name only it claims it's not been going well for him. It's terrible, it's, isn't it? I mean, now, a lot, in large part, there's a big chunk of this which is somewhat outside of his oh, control, yeah. given yeah. the fact that there is this ongoing police investigation, which we can't really comment on, but obviously in the past week, we saw Colin Beattie, the SNP's treasurer for many years, being the second leading SNP official to be arrested. But at the same time, if there was anyone who was, I would think, you know, kind of uniquely incapable to weather the storm of a serious crisis, it's probably Hamza Youssef. He's a bungler. He's, you know, messed up every brief he's ever had. He's terrible with the media. I mean, he said this week that he didn't think that the SNP were being run as a criminal organisation. I mean, that's the sort of thing you should know, really, rather yeah. than think. It's not the first um, question you ask. Well, no, it shouldn't be the first question you ask. But if you've just taken this SNP <laughs> over, it should be the first question you ask. Uh, yeah. This is a man who can't even handle a knee scooter, let alone run a country. So it is the <laughs> sort of thing which uh, I think it's, it's, that, it's that combination of an incredible, unforeseen, potentially for him, he seemed to be quite in the dark about what was going on, scandal, uh, but at the same time meeting a minister who... A first minister who doesn't seem to really know what he's doing. No, it's it's, it's not looking great, is it? No. But we shall, we shall see. You never know. It's all down to the electorate. Mm -hmm. Whenever they get their say. Um, thank you both, Emma, Tom. It's thank, been you good to you. thank you very much. Thank you really so much. Thank you.